Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Chemical Guys Detail Garage. Today we're going to be breaking down our Torque X polisher. Let's go ahead and open up our Torque X box. So this right here, it pops up very nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking out everything one by one. Now you will find that you do have an extra backing plate. Now this right here is our Hyperflex backing plate and this is great if you're working on a vehicle that has a lot of curvature. Maybe you just want to apply some pressure and really get into those curves very nicely and very evenly as opposed to the backing plate which comes on the Torque X already which is our traditional standard backing plate and this one's more stiff so this one's great for working on flat panels like hoods, doors, vertical surfaces, flat surfaces, you name it. That's gonna work out great in your favor. And you also have your, obviously your user manual, and you also have the wrench right here, which allows you to change your backing plate size and your carbon brushes. If you ever need to change your carbon brushes, they're located right here on the sides of your polisher. So I'll pull the Torque X right here, right in front of you. And this is where your carbon brushes are at. Those pop up very easily. You can actually use the wrench provided in the kit to open that up and swap those out. Now the Torque X is great because this polisher is dual action. It's a random orbital polisher and it's gonna work out great for all experience levels. Not just for polishing, like uh, cutting scratches and swirls, but it's also gonna work out great for applying things like glazes, sealants, and waxes as well. It's a bit short in size as compared to most polishers on the market. We do actually have different models which are larger, but this one here is kind of like our little baby. It's a smaller polisher, which is great for the majority of vehicles that you work on. And you can also change the backing plate. So if you wanted to put a smaller backing plate, such as a three inch backing plate, you can totally do so. I'll show you guys how to do that in just a bit. You'll also see right here that you have different speed settings that you can actually use your Torque X polisher that ranges from one to six. This is a dual action random orbital polisher. So the thing there is that there's really not gonna be an exact RPM rating as to how fast you're going depending on what speed you're on simply because it's oscillating and spinning at the same time. And that's a safety feature that we offer with this polisher simply because whenever you apply too much pressure, that's gonna apply a lot of heat and you don't wanna burn your paint. So that's one of the safety measures that we apply to this machine. That way you don't damage your clear coat, which is great because if you're new to polishing, then this is gonna be the safest option for you. Last but not least, it does come with an eight foot cord, which is more than enough. That way you can go ahead and do your entire vehicle. You can also connect it to an extension cord if you need to. Most people often think that just because it's called the polisher, it just removes scratches and swirls. That's a big myth. Now, the great thing about this polisher is that you can actually do tons of things with it. Not only cutting scratches and swirls, oxidation, water spots, and much more, but you can also use it for applying things like glazes, sealants, and waxes to your vehicle. So if you're an old school cat who likes hand waxing, I highly recommend that you check out the dual action polisher with your finishing pad and your favorite chemical guys wax. In this case right here, we have butter wet wax, or maybe you want to apply a glaze or a sealant. You can use this to apply a nice thin coat. And I personally believe that applying a wax sealant or glaze with your Torque DA polisher is the best way of doing so just because you're going to save a lot of time and effort, not only time and effort, but also product as well. So if you're doing this as a business, you're definitely gonna save a ton of money on your chemicals because you're not gonna be wasting as much as if you were doing it by hand. If you're doing it by hand, you oftentimes over apply the product and a lot of that product just sits on the vehicle and it's just used up product that you know just gets wasted. Anything that's on the surface in excess, that's all wasted product. And this applies the perfect, nice thin layer of product to your vehicle. And that nice thin layer of product is also gonna help you remove it very quickly and easily as opposed to applying a heavy coat of wax. You're gonna save a lot of time and effort in that process as well. Another cool thing that you can do with this polisher is you can actually use our carpet drill attachments. So right here, we actually have two of them. As you guys can see, there's two different versions. We have the long bristle and the short bristle. This is all entirely up to yourself in terms of personal preference, which one you wanna use. Now the long bristle brush, I like to use for more thicker carpet, more dense carpet, like shag carpet. This is gonna work out great for not only your vehicle, but you can also use this at home as well for cleaning rugs, couches, and so much more. And you also have your short bristle brush right here, which is gonna work out great for more deeper agitation. So if you're working on a heavier stain, more grime, a dirtier surface, this is gonna be your best bet. And these all connect directly onto the polisher itself via this hook and loop Velcro padding. So as you guys can see, this has a nice little Velcro material and this side has the mesh. So it's extremely easy to apply. All you have to do is simply line it up, press it down and you're all good to go. And as you guys can see, it spins. And then if you were to turn on the machine, it'll also start oscillating as well. So that's some of the great things that you can actually do with these polishers, not only for your paint, 
but your carpets as well. And then right now, I'm gonna also show you guys how to change your backing plate. So what you wanna do for that is you wanna remove your carpet attachment. And then at this point of the process, you wanna do two things. So you wanna grab your wrench that comes with your torque polisher. Then you wanna go ahead and flip this upside down. Now, right here, there's actually a very, very, very small opening in between the backing plate and this little metal piece right here. Now, this is where you wanna stick the wrench into. So you wanna go ahead and stick the wrench into that part. And then you wanna go ahead and just simply twist the backing plate up until you feel your uh, wrench hooks onto the nut that's in the middle. And then once it hooks up onto there, all you have to do is simply twist it off. And just like that, you're all done. And if you guys want a close up right there, this is basically what you want the wrench to look like. So it grabs it on there and then you basically, sorry, you grab it on there and then you basically just spin the back plate off and it comes off very easily. So once you're done with that, you can go ahead and grab your smaller backing plate. So that's the great thing about this Torque X that you can actually put a smaller one. You wanna keep the washer on there. So make sure that this piece is on there. And then you wanna do the exact same thing. So you don't just wanna just put it on there and start twisting it because the nut is gonna also gonna be twisting at the same time. So you wanna make sure that the wrench is on there. And then you wanna put the backing plate on there. And then you just wanna go ahead and twist that on. And then once it's all the way done, you just wanna go ahead and give it a nice hard twist. That way it locks in and it doesn't fall off. Pull out your wrench and you're all good to go. And you've successfully changed your backing plate to a three inch backing plate, and you can use the smaller pad. And these pads are great if you're working on uh, smaller areas of your vehicle, or maybe you have a motorcycle or things like B pillars, that's gonna work out incredible. You're polishing wheels, you name it, that's gonna work out great for all occasions. All right, so now that you've set up your polisher, then now you can go ahead and connect it. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect it here to an extension cord. And then I'm gonna show you guys the different settings that this polisher has to offer. So the speed settings, it all really depends on what you're doing. Um, when you're applying things like waxes, sealants, and glazes, you can go ahead and use the lowest speed setting there simply because you're not working the product into the paint. You're simply applying it. So all you wanna do is basically just apply it in a nice thin coat and speed settings one to two are gonna help you do that. You're not working the product into the paint, you're working it onto the paint. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you're doing cutting, that's when you wanna go ahead and use a higher speed setting. It's like four, five, and six. If you're applying a polish, you can do those with three or four. Uh, you can do it with the higher speed setting, like four, five, and six. However, it's not really necessary just because the abrasives in polish are so fine that they'll break down very quickly and very easily with the lower speed setting. So you're better off just taking your time, taking it easy, and just making sure that you're in full control of your polisher, especially if you're working in intricate areas like B pillars or hard to reach areas like around your headlights, bumper, stuff like that. Just make sure you have the ultimate control, keep it easy. If you do need the heavy cut, go ahead and turn it up on a higher speed setting and knock yourself out. All right guys, now as far as placement and positioning of your polisher as you're polishing, it all depends on the surface that you're working on. Now, if you're working on a flat surface, then all you wanna do is just make sure that the pad is parallel to the surface that you're working on. And you can do so simply by holding the back of the polisher with your hand, if you're left-handed or right-handed, and then you wanna hold the head of the polisher with your other hand. Now, whenever you're holding your polisher, you never wanna apply pressure like this to where the pad starts kind of curling upwards. That's way too much pressure, and then what's gonna happen is your backing plate is not gonna spin. It's gonna oscillate, but it's not gonna spin. That spinning motion is what gives you that cut. So if you're trying to cut, you don't wanna apply that kind of pressure onto your vehicle whenever you're just trying to do anything. So always make sure that you only use the weight of your palm to just kind of uh, set it down and just keep it flat against the surface that you're working on. And this rule also applies whenever you're working on a curved area. So if you're working on things like fenders, bumpers, headlights, you always wanna make sure that this pad is always parallel to the surface that you're working on. So even though it starts curving, just make sure you're kind of rolling your wrist to whichever the direction of the curve is. That way you're not just kind of uh, putting more pressure onto one of the corners of the pad as opposed to doing the entire thing because you're gonna achieve a better result when the entire face of the pad is parallel to the surface that you're working on as opposed to just working at one corner at a time like this. I don't know if you guys can see right there, but if I'm trying to polish and I have my backing plate like this, as you guys can see, there's a ton of pressure right here and this right here is not even touching the surface. So this right here, which you may think it's cutting and you may be doing a great job, 
You're actually not because this area right here of the pad is not even touching the surface that you're working on. So you're going to have to go ahead and make sure that you go ahead and go back to the area. Otherwise, you're going to have high spots. So, all right, guys, and that's going to go ahead and conclude it for this video. If you guys have any questions, maybe something that we didn't cover in this video, like, you know, cutting scratches and swirls or maybe applying a glaze sealant or wax with your DA polisher, make sure to check out our full library of videos on our YouTube channel. We have over 1300 videos on our channel. We have a full video on every single one of these products so if you guys want to see any of these products in use go ahead and type chemical guys on youtube and you'll find it and if there's anything at all that we did not cover in this video that you used to have questions on make sure to leave it in the comment section below we'll either answer it for you on the spot or we'll give you a full video on how to do that and if you guys want to pick up any of these products they're available right now on our website chemicalguides.com or at your local detail garage store. Make sure that you sign up for our My Rewards Club. That way you get rewarded for every dollar that you spend on our website. And you can use those points to get free products, exclusive discounts, and exclusive access to new upcoming products that we have not yet released. As always, my name is Joey. This is Chemical Guys Detail Garage. We'll see you next time.